All right, so when I'm recording this video for you, it is the 18th of June, 2025. And yesterday, Adobe released a whole load of updates across both the Lightroom ecosystem and Photoshop. And there were some real corkers in there, some very, very exciting stuff. However, there's one update which has come into, at the moment, into Camera Raw, which out of everything that was updated yesterday, I think is the most exciting, and it's called Variants. All right, so what is variance? Well, let me just explain by showing you on this little uh, document that I've put together here, which is basically a number of different uh, green swatches of different tone. So let's just imagine that I wanted to make all of these swatches here the same color as the one in the middle. To do that, I would just go to now the filter menu, and I'm going to dive into camera raw filter. And that's where you're going to find this variance. And you're going to come down to the color mixer section where we have point color. And I've done a video on point color in the past. Again, very, very powerful stuff. I'll link to that in the description. But now it's got variance added into it. The way we use it is this. Here we've got the sampler. I'm going to press to use that, bring it over into my, my image, and I'm going to choose the middle swatch. I could choose any of them, but I'll go for the middle one. And when I click down on it, the color of that middle swatch is sampled into this area just here. Now, if we look down, we've got the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders, but we now have this variant slider, which is in early access. Now, I can move this slider left or right. If I go left, we get a negative value. If I go right, we get a positive value. And what's going to happen here is if I go negative value, that is basically telling Camera Raw that I want as little variance or as little difference between the other colors in the image and the one that I selected. So you can see now, because I bring it all the way over to the left-hand side, look how all the other swatches are starting to match in with the one that I sampled. So now we've got one complete tone going across the whole of that image, or that document. Now look, if I go the opposite way, what's gonna happen is it's gonna tell Camera Raw that I want more variance, more difference between the other colors in the image, the other swatches, and the one I selected. So more contrast between them. So now you can see they're really starting to stand out now. So how can we use this practically in our retouching? Well, here's just some of the ways that we can think of using it, both practically and creatively. So I'll come out of Camera Raw. I've got here a uh, portrait that I took. This is one that I've shown before to how to remove the reddening in this gentleman's cheeks here. I've shown so many different ways of doing this, using the hue and saturation adjustment layer. I've shown how to use point color to do this. But now check out how easy this is to do using variants. What I will do is I'm just going to create a duplicate of it. I might as well. And then I'll just for best practice, I'll convert this for smart filters, just in case I want to make some changes to it later on. Then I'll go to the filter menu and choose Camera Raw. Once I'm in here, I will then, uh, basically I want to use a mask because I want to isolate the skin on the face first, just in case some of the colors I want to change appear elsewhere in the image. So I'll go to the masking section. Camera Raw examines the image and sees, right, I can recognize the person. So I click on the thumbnail and then it will give me the appropriate masks that I can create for this portrait. The one I want to use is just the facial skin. So then I'll click on Create. So now we have that facial skin mask, which we can see here in the masking section. I'll turn off the overlay. We don't need that to be on. And I'm going to zoom in as well on it. In fact, I'll go just a little bit closer now that we're there. So how can I now get rid of this reddening in his cheeks using variants? Well, really, really simply. I'll come down to where it's got the point color section here. Here we've got the sampler. I click down to use it, and I'm going to bring it over into the image to say, look, this is the skin tone that I want uniformly across his face. I don't want this red. This is kind of this area here maybe would be a good skin tone to, to use. So I press down to say, look, I want this skin tone. That skin tone is then sampled into here. Now, you could change it. You could open up this little menu here and drag around these markers to change the hue and the darkness and lightness of it. But I'm going to leave it as it is because I quite like that skin tone. 
Then all I will do is come down to the variance slider. And I, like I said, if I go to the left, I want there to be as little difference as possible between where I selected and other colors within the skin. So now look, I'm going to take it slowly over to the left and look what happens. Look at the reddening on the cheeks starting to go. <laughs> I think it's just amazing. And then all of a sudden, they're gone. I've not had to individually select those red tones at all. They're individually gone. So now we're getting more of a, a uniform kind of toning going across the face. But now we've done that, we can come to these sliders here to start to kind of give it the skin tone just a little bit of a changing color that we want that think looks best. So we can change the hue, warm the skin up just a little bit. We can brighten it or darken it. I'll go for something like that. But look now, look, here we've got the preview on and off so we can see before and after. So if I just press down, that's before, that's after. That's before, that's after. Incredibly powerful, absolutely love it. Let's just try another one. We'll come out of there. We'll go to this portrait here, which is an old portrait of my friend called Simon. And you can see on this one here, there's a little bit of a, a change in the skin tone, certainly around his cheeks, uh, on his nose. Uh, and it's a little bit different to what's on the forehead there. And I'd like it if it kind of matched in just a little bit better. So let's have a look. Let's go to color variants. I'll create a copy. We'll go to filter and we'll do best practice. Let's convert for smart filters. And then we'll go to the filter menu and go into the camera raw filter. Now, again, because this is a portrait, I'm going to use the masking section to limit this only to the skin, just in case some of the colors that I want for the skin tone do happen to appear elsewhere within the image, like his hair and whatever. So we'll go to the masking section. Camera raw looks at the image to see if there is a person. It recognizes there is. I click on the thumbnail. And what masks we've got available to us, loads of different ones here. But again, I only want the facial skin. So I'll tap on that and then click on Create. So let's now zoom in. We'll go to maybe sort of, uh, let's go to 33%. Turn that overlay off. And I'm going to come down to the point color section here where we have the sampler. So I click on the sampler, bring it over and say, look, I don't want all this all these different red tones here. It doesn't look so good. I would wish the skin tone was more uniformly maybe like just here. This here is a nice skin tone. So that's the skin tone we've got there. And I could open this up, play around and change it a little bit, but I'm going to leave it as it is. All I will do now is just come to the variant slider and to say, look, I want as little difference between the rest of the skin tone and where I selected. So we get a nice uniform color across the skin. And I'd take it over to the left to a negative value. And now look, so we get to round about maybe there. So now it's starting to look as if it's quite uniform across it. So then I can start to come and say, look, let's just change the skin tone then just a little bit. We can make a universal adjustment to it. Brighten him up something like that. Let's go to fit. And now look, if we go before and after, before and after. So quick and easy to do. That's kind of practical ways that you could do it, but there are creative ways. You know, this is how I would use this variant slider to really fix skin tones very, very quickly. But for landscapers, there's also, you know, creative uses that you can have here as well. Let's take this image as, a, as an example. Let's say that I want to really emphasize all the different tones of green within the, within the trees just here. I'll go to the color mixer section, go to point color, click on the point sampler here, and then just choose one of the areas of the trees. So I'll go for this one here, nice kind of color just there on those leaves. That samples it into here. And then what we could do, so far with the portraits, I've gone a negative value in the variance. Let's go to a positive value in the variance. So now what I'm doing is telling Camera Raw to make the surrounding colors even more varied, even more different to the color that I've originally click down on. So I'll take it all the way to plus 100. And you can see, look, if I do the before and after, how that's exaggerating it. But I can also then come into these sliders here to really emphasize it. So let's just boost up the saturation just a little bit. And already look, two sliders, that's all it's taken. And look at the difference now in the foliage. Just incredible, the control that this gives you here. But let's just reset it by double clicking on that little marker there. But also take the variance now. What can we do if we take it all the way to the left hand side to try to get it so that the greens here across the trees match closer to where I originally clicked down. So we'll take it over to the left, 
See, it's changing. See how it's changing now? They're all becoming a lot more burned orange kind of colors across them now. Something like that. And so we can go before and after, before and after. Let's change the hue to make them all more of a uniform kind of green. I mean, wow. Just absolutely fantastic. So let's do the before and after, before and after. So yeah, I had to let you know about that one just in case it had slipped under the radar and you'd missed it. I mean, out of all the things yesterday that were introduced by Adobe across the Lightroom ecosystem and Photoshop, this variance for me is by far the most exciting. I, I really, really love it. Very, very useful, very powerful bit of kit. And what's more exciting as well is the fact that generally, historically, we tend to see things that are early access in Camera Raw making their way into Lightroom. So that I cannot wait to see. So I wanted to let you know about it just in case you'd missed it. Give it a go, have a play with it. Let me know how you're getting on with it. I'd be really interested to hear what uses you're finding for it. So let me know in the comments section. But for this video, that's all I've got for you. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.